Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have something new that just came out and it's from Matek. It's an all-in-one flight controller that they just released. However, if you take a look at it, it just looks like a Matek F405, you know? So what's so cool about this? Well, let's get into some of the things that it comes with. One, obviously you get the board. Two, you get rubber dampeners. They don't give you four, they give you six, just in case you lose a couple, which is very nice. So let's push this to the side. They also give you a Rubicon low ESR capacitor and it's rated for 35 volts, 470 microfarad. If you were curious, hopefully we don't have to use this, but it's also nice to just place this. It keeps the overall system clean. Now let's move this to the side here. Now it also comes with something else here, which is pretty interesting. And if we take a look here, we get these antennas. Now why the hell would we get antennas for an all one flight controller? Well, if we take a look at the back side, we have an FR Sky X protocol receiver. Isn't that insane? That's just awesome. That's just crazy. So Maytech has gone ahead and done something new again, which is super awesome. And this is what, you know, I like to see. I like to see something new. It's been, everything has just been so static lately. And, you know, people are just getting so bored. Like, let's try low KV, uh, high volt, and just all kinds of crazy stuff. People are coming down to tiny whoops because there isn't just... You know, there isn't anything really new that's coming out uh, that often anymore. Hopefully, during the end of spring or this spring and towards the summer, we're going to see a lot more stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at the layout of this board. And we will be testing this as soon as possible because I'm very excited for this one. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can tell here, we have the arrow up here, which means this would be set into your quadcopter like this. And let's go ahead and check the motor orientation here. So if we are running beta flight, just stock beta flight, we'd have motor one here, motor two here, motor three there, motor four there. So let's just check the layout. Motor one, two, three, four, perfect. So that's perfect. And you can already tell they have an OSD right here. So it is running beta flight OSD, which is very nice to see. We do have current sensing. However, the current sensing here is pretty interesting on this board. It has an output for the current sensor and it even has an input for the current sensor, which is pretty insane. So this board is like almost universal and adaptable to even anything, not just quadcopters. We're talking about even possibly, you know, like all uh, those fixed wings and all the kind of crazy stuff that I just, I don't use but I'm just saying you just have these little extra features here and there however you know they missed something that would have just been that would have just made it absolutely awesome an extra pad by the signal for telemetry for ESC telemetry I don't know why you forgot may take I really hope you're watching this and you release a second version as soon as possible with a telemetry pad but I know you have a lot of things here that probably couldn't fit it. I know they had it in mind, but there's probably no way to fit it. Cause look at all this, there's so many things. So the, the receiver is connected via SPI, which is pretty good. It's, it's gonna be very fast. And uh, you get full, you know, everything. Uh, not just telemetry, you get smart port, you, you get everything. You control, uh, change the settings for, for your flight controller, everything. You don't, it just does not take up any extra space, which is pretty awesome. But you know, you're limited to having an FR Sky protocol radio or you know one of those universal ones like the jumper ones so take that into consideration now let's take a look at the board here so we said the motor orientation is correct it's working in the f4 flight controller and it's using the mpu 6000 gyro which is the good gyro which is the gyro that we all love all right so we're going to go ahead and start from this side down here and as you can tell here we have ground ground five volt five volt LED and a buzzer. So here, if you wanted to do some kind of LED, you would give it ground, five volt for the LED pad. And the LED here is the signal pin for the LED, which tells it what color to be or to change. Now down here, we have a buzzer pad um, right there. You would probably put the five volt positive of the buzzer there and the negative here. It's very important that you put the negative here because this side is what's controlling the buzzer here. And if we take a look here, we have T2 and R2, which is TX2 and RX2, which is UR2, T1, R1, which is UR1, a ground, and a 5 volt. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this side. There isn't really many paths there because everything is kind of built in, you know. There's no S bus pad because the transmit the receiver is built in, which is which saves a lot of time and space in wire management. And I really like that. But we're gonna have to see how this one performs. I hopefully it performs very good. So 
here we have another 5 volt. We have another two 5 volts, 5 volt and ground, 5 volt and ground. So here what I would do is, as you can tell, there's cam right there. So what I would put is the 5 volt and the ground for the camera and then the cam wire right here. Now this is pretty cool. I really, really love this and I really, really wish more flight controls do this. Now usually a VTX, this does not have any other regulator on board other than a 3.3 volt regulator and a 5 volt regulator. So that means most VTXs which run 7 to 24 volts uh, will need power from the battery right here. However, Maytek thought this through and said, no, why go all the way take your positive from me? I've done that for many flight controllers. Why go take the positive for your VTX from here when we could just put you a little VBAT right there? Isn't that awesome? So that means the battery voltage. So you don't have to go here to supply power for your VTX. This will keep it overall clean also. Uh, you don't have to, you know, solder in your XC60 connector and try to solder on top of another wire and ruin that whole joint which you've perfected for the first time in your life and you know you don't have to deal with that which is pretty awesome so you could just power off the VTX here as you can see VBAT you give it the red which is power for the for the VTX ground is ground and the VTX which is the yellow wire here simple and done and if we take a look here we have one two three and four Motors one to four can also be just soldered here if you didn't want to use these pads. So th these are basically routed the same thing. So this one is really this one. They're connected together. S1 is, well, where is S1 right there? So you could solder your mo ESC signal here or you can solder them there and you're good to go. And if you're worried about grounding your ESC, just wrap it around the ground ESC power right here and then just solder them together and you're good to go. And here's the current. Uh, sensor pad that I was talking about. So I think this is the one that could be used to even output the current current sensing to something else like Arduino logger or something, whatever your heart desires. And you could do whatever you want with it. That's just a nice little feature, but I'm not going to be using it. Here we have a 3.3 volt pad. It's a 3.3 volt regulator. I guess just in case if you're running a spectrum or something or you need something to be powered by 3.3 volts. So you can go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other side now. On the other side, you see some filtration. We have a TVS diode. This protects for, uh, against high voltage in a way, which is pretty good. Uh, these are very nice to see. These, these will help the system stay overall clean, uh, especially with a low ESR capacitor. That will give it just a nice little extra boost, kind of like a little tiny turbocharger or supercharger for a low ESR capacitor in a way. I mean, it's just, you know, yeah. Anyways, and uh, here we have one of our regulators and we got some caps here, just a little nice filtration going on. And we have the bind button here. And like I said, the boot buttons on top, as you can tell, there's two buttons right there. And that's really it. I mean, that's it. You put your antennas here. I'd recommend you hot glue them into place uh, because, yeah, I just recommend doing that depending on how you have it stacked in your quad. But I do highly recommend you just hot glue it. And that's really it. I mean, it does have OSD and MPU 6000 gyro. Oh yeah, it takes up to 30 volts. So it basically takes up to a 6S LiPo, which is pretty insane. So this is like kind of one of those, you know, high voltage, low KV setups. This is what you would kind of go for, really. This is what I would go for right now. Um, not that I've tested or anything. We could put it on for noise testing, but there's really no reason to put it for noise testing because uh, it's just going to come down to your ESCs because the voltage or the the power that's powering up your vtx is not from a built-in regulator it's coming straight from the battery so there's really no need to to do any kind of noise testing it just comes down to escs now if you had a nine volt regulator then we'd hit it with a noise test because we want to see how good that nine volt regulator is giving the power to our vtx and keeping the overall system running clean without noise or with noise and all that kind of crazy good stuff and that's really it, guys. All right, guys, so there's a couple things I want to tell you. Um, currently, I'm working on a setup to put on my current thrust stand and to enable me to put four motors and actually really simulate flight. Now, I've figured out that I could do it through the uh, multi-weave protocol, which basically is what the Betaflight configurator talks to these flight controllers. So I can use that protocol to talk and then just, you know, simulate flight, just send it the kind of whatever I want, what kind of commands I want and have it do all kinds of crazy stuff. And at the same time, have the four motors, four ESCs attached while we're just recording everything we possibly can from FPV video feed to the noise to just about everything. So it's going to be pretty interesting and pretty fun. And also I've just created also, well, I've designed the adapter for my current thrust stand and I'm calibrating the load cells so I can test 11 
XX motors, which is like 1103 motors, 1104 motors, 1106 motors, Emacs motors, and even, you know, those tiny propellers that we really just hear people saying how good they are because they fly them, but we really get no data behind it. And I'm really starting to get into that a bit. And I, I would, I'm planning on starting that chapter soon on the channel also. And that's it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the content. Please consider joining my Patreon. I do have a lot of giveaways this month. I have three giveaways. The custom frame that I have designed. You'll be seeing that very soon. Uh, it's called the Split Sane. It's a split level three inch. Uh, it's supposed to be very efficient, very light. Frame overall weight uh, with the standoffs and everything without anything on it is around 18 grams. So it's, it's going to be a beast. Um, and yeah, that's going to be one of the giveaways. And then Jeb RC Sparrow. And maybe some kind of good 4 in 1 ESC or something else for my Patreons. I don't know just yet. Uh, but it's hope it's going to be three giveaways this month for the Patreon. So yeah, consider joining Patreon. You don't only just support the channel. You can get some free awesome stuff. And your possibilities of winning are pretty good because I don't have many Patreons. So that's one thing. You could also use affiliate links down below. Those greatly support the channel. And I will also be doing one giveaway of the frame to YouTube. The split same frame to a lucky YouTube subscriber. Just keep monitoring until I build it, set it up, test flight it. It'll be in that video when I will give out all the information. And that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.